Group 1 Prototype Series race at Suzuka, the hardest race in Gran Turismo 7 by far. I made a video already telling you how to win this race, but a lot has changed. I re-ran this race over and over again, I think six or seven times, with different cars to see what works the best and tell you exactly how you can win. Avoid mistakes. A lot of you have been throwing comments on my previous video saying it's impossible to win, things have changed, the tyre wear model's changed, the fuel wear model's changed, how is it even possible, how is this guy's tyres not wearing out? I'm going to answer all of those questions in this video. I'm going to try a bunch of different cars, we're going to show you a bunch of different tunes. Uh, explain how to uh, play it with regard to the weather, see what works best, how you can really uh, maximise your strategy to be okay when the weather comes down and we're also going to have some fantastic slips, tricks, spills and crashes in this one. Coming back to my previous video, I recommended the Porsche 919 Hybrid with a tune in that video as the, my go-to car for this race. This is for the purists, it's a Group 1 prototype series race and this is a Group 1 car, so for me that was my natural choice. Uh, and first of all, I'm going to go and see if my original uh, strategy it still works. L let's go and see. So for the Porsche 919 Hybrid, I, I can't remember what setup I used for that car, but I'm going to run through a brand new one right now. You will need the racing hard tyres and you will need both the uh, wet and intermediate tyres just in case. We're going to start a brand new setup so you know exactly straight from scratch. We're going to call it uh, GR1 Pro Prototypes. That'll do. Something like that. Then we're going to need to put all the things we need on the vehicle. So the, the new setup sheet, it starts with racing medium tyres. Immediately we're going to change them to racing hard. That is the best tyre to use, certainly if you want to do a uh, no-stop strategy, which my, was my original recommendation. Suzuka is a high downforce track. There's a lot of high-speed corners where you really need to carry the corner speed. So we're going to use a pretty high downforce setup. Uh, just dropping that front downforce a little bit down to make it a bit safer to drive. We're going to put the medium RPM turbocharger to get that extra power in the car. We're going to need that one. Uh, and um, that should be it. I think we'll play with the gears a little bit. So we'll put the uh, the fully customizable racing transmission on there. Just knock up the gears a little bit. That should help a little bit with fuel efficiency. And aside from that, I'm not really going to make any other changes. I think that should be good enough to go. Calculation wise, we're under the 950 PP limit. So that's all good. In fact, there's a little bit of headroom. Uh, with this particular uh, build so you can tune it a bit further if you want to we can only use the racing hard tires because that would take us over the limit uh, and we're going to start the race now the original recommended strategy was a no stop strategy uh, so we're going to put out fuel map three just to make sure we've got a good amount of fuel we can make the full 10 laps on the tank of fuel and the strategy here is just to be consistent we're not going to be trying to race to get the fastest lap. We're not going to be trying to race to pass every single car on the track. We're going to be going with uh, pit efficiency here, fuel efficiency. We're not going to see the pits once in this race. Uh, Wilk, who leads the race, who is often the fastest car in the race, he will pit at least three times in this race. So uh, he's going to be out of contention. I think it's between Miyazono and I think Mikel Hizal is also the threat in this race. Skipping forwards now. Uh, lap number two is where I start to flick to the MFD uh, radar. I'll zoom all the way out to get an idea of if the rain's coming in or not. The weather in this race is very random. Uh, and you can see for this particular running of the race, we're going to get the slightest hint of rain. It doesn't even rain. When it's light blue like this, it doesn't even rain. So there's no problem at all. We can continue this race without pitting. We don't need to pit for tyres. We don't need to pit for fuel. And this is how we're going to win this race skipping forward to lap number nine just starting lap number nine and we're actually a little bit short on fuel we need two laps of fuel and we're only 1.7 laps remaining so we're just going to knock that fuel mixture down a little bit and that's going to get us to the end of the race without needing the pits just keep an eye on your fuel usage if you're going for a no stop strategy rounding out this race now as we're going to come to almost finish the race and our tires are very very worn so you can still make it with the new tire model However, if you're using a controller, you may experience a little bit more tire wear. So the no stop strategy on controller might not work for you. So we're going to try something different. So we end up finishing that race in 17 minutes, 47 seconds. But let's just try again, see what happens with the weather, see what happens with the strategy. But in this one, I'm going to go for uh, fuel mixture one, maximum attack, no short shifting, no 
uh, fuel saving in any way and we're going to pit whenever we need to pit either for weather or for fuel and that's probably going to be around lap number seven so straight away you can see on that higher uh, fuel mixture the more rich fuel mixture more power more drive uh, the car may be slightly harder to drive just pay a bit of respect on some corner exits in, in second gear uh, once you're into third gear you'll be all good um, but yeah with the fuel mixture on one we can really start to challenge these guys early on get those early moves done and really put the hammer down again rerunning this race in the porsche 919 hybrid just makes me really feel how good this car is to drive it's really good fun it really handles well it's got great downforce in the high speed corners you can just flow through really quite nicely one thing I did forget in my uh, setup is to use brake balance all the way to the rear. Uh, you can change this on the fly through the MFD, but my recommendation is five rear for the brake bias in this Porsche 919. It just helps you when you're on the brakes and you can just uh, turn into the corner much nicer and brake a bit deeper and trail brake to the apex a bit more. Uh, looking at the weather map now, lap number two, we've got a hint of some wet weather coming in on the radar, but again i don't think it's going to be enough to mean that we need to change tires so this one is going to be a strategy of fuel usage rather than tire usage so yeah for me that that's that's two races two fully dry races and what you're all talking about what, what's the, what's this problem with the weather you're all speaking about it's perfectly fine does it even rain anymore for this race well a little bit later in the video we're going to explore rain in a lot of detail uh, but for now in this one if it's a dry race you will often find that uh, Wilk will pit at the end of lap number three and he will also pit at the end of lap number six and at the end of lap number nine so Wilk is not in contention for this race pitting three times is never going to work so don't be concerned by Wilk being a long way ahead of this race and again on the radar the, there's rain in the air but it never actually falls down by lap number six we're able to catch to Miyazono for the lead uh, just put a little block pass on in there and just go and check out and then at the end of lap number six we're going to see that uh, Miyazono actually pits so Miyazono is on a two uh, sorry a one-stop strategy the same strategy we are on but he's pitted one lap earlier and also you will see that, that Wilk will also pit again so that's his second stop of this race I'm on lap number seven that's the end of his lap number six so he's also well, I think it's the tire choice that he goes with those soft tires just don't last very long at all so we are really in a strong position here lap number seven will be our pit lap so as we skip forward to the end of lap number seven uh, we're just making our count of fuel keeping on fuel lap number one it's all good uh, we're going to put a new set of racing hard tires on and we're going to slightly overfill the car you can be really flexible with this strategy the one-stop strategy in the porsche 919 you can pit anywhere from lap three to lap seven and then just fuel appropriately uh, depending on traffic or depending what you want to do or even depending on rain when the rain comes you've got a pretty broad window of opportunity to pit so yeah i think the one-stop strategy is actually a slightly better faster strategy than the no-stop strategy i recommended previously what i'm going to do now i'm going to talk you through one lap at suzuka in this porsche 919 hybrid with the setup that i uh, showed earlier in the video uh, and just let you know how to drive this track as fast as you can so into turn one you can drive right to the apex and then you start to brake as you hit the apex right down to third gear take that first double corner as one continuous sweep up to fourth gear for this left hander and then down to third gear for the right continuing in third gear for the sweep to the left and then continue in third gear for the sweep to the right keep as far right as you can so you get a great entry into the left hander and carry the speed all the way through there approaching degna one now very dangerous corner break just after the 100 board maybe it's 75 meters down one gear throw it through degna one and then break into degna two right down to second gear caution on corner exit can be a little bit lively brake before the curbing on the right hand side ends i was a little bit too late on the brakes here i went a little bit too deep down to first gear and then be cautious on corner exit you've got a little bit of time to think now you're flat out for a good portion of time the next significant corner will be spoon curve uh, you're going to be braking just as the path on the right hand side appears down two gears for the first part of spoon uh, going through in third gear and then just on the brakes a little bit now just staying in third gear for the second part of spoon careful for not running too wide on corner exit from spoon there again another short break down the straight here into 130r this is completely flat out in this car you've got the downforce trust the car 
turn the car in nicely and then you're all good. The 150 board is your braking reference for the final chicane. All the way down to second gear, you can cut a lot of the chicane here, bouncing over the curbs, cautious on corner exit, and then run to the line. And you've got a fantastic lap time. I think this lap time we did it at 1 minute 42. Uh, 1 minute 42.1. Uh, I have done 141s in this Porsche 919. You may see that later, later in the video, but we're going to skip forward to the 10th lap of the race, finishing the race uh, just the right amount of fuel on the in the car, and we're all good. Another first place, no rain, uh, 17 minutes 38. So that is the fastest strategy so far, um, but I'm going to try again because I am just want to test this guy out for you guys because you're saying the rain's coming, but I've not seen it yet. Let, let's see what happens. For this one, I'm feeling a bit cocky, so I put it in hard mode so we're going to drive from cockpit view and you know what guys i really enjoyed this one it is hard in cockpit view it feels like you're driving a tank looking through a letterbox ah oh, it it was very very immersive guys just check out the onboard footage i found it difficult to battle with the guy in 19th place in this race and it took me a little while to get myself dialed in um but for this one we're just going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to use the one-stop strategy again. That is the fastest strategy in this Porsche 919 hybrid. But I've just got a, a screen full of cars. I'm going to send it into Degna 1 and make that move happen. A little bit of a bounce over the curb. Maybe that was a block pass. Who really knows? But no, enjoying racing from cockpit view, guys. Let me know in the comments below. What, what view do you race from? Uh, I'm going to send it on a couple of guys into this one here. And just, I can't even see the apex. Where, where's the... Uh, it's so difficult to drive but I really quite like it. I would love to use cockpit view a little bit more in Gran Turismo 7. Skipping forwards now, lap number two, we're gonna be breaking into the, uh, the hairpin. We're gonna get all sorts of wrong and get tagged by the AI and just loop the car out. That's a bit unfortunate, but we can recover. We've got a good bit of pace over these guys, I think. Uh, so I can make this one work, I'm sure. Now I've got a face full of, oh, it's all kicking off here. They absolutely kicked off in this race. It was so, so chaotic. So lap number three, we've managed to get to 13th. Um, not too bad, but it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to this cockpit view, guys, but it's, it's so much fun. Bonus tip for you guys, do these races and enjoy driving the races. Don't think about the result. Don't think about whether you need to finish it or not, or whether you need to win it or not. Just enjoy driving in this car Give yourself time to practice, give yourself time to get familiar with it and not only will you get faster, you will beat this race and you'll be so satisfied. Just putting the time in to get used to the way the car drives, it's not going to be a one shot race guys, it is a very difficult race and as we're about to see here, it's not always plain sailing. So you can see on the radar now, there is rain coming and more significantly the, the coloured parts of the rain is what you need to be worried about. In this one, I underestimated the rain. I should have pitted, I didn't pit, and well, it's all gonna kick off, guys. I did get the fastest lap of the race on that lap, so one minute 44, I I'm off the pace in cockpit view, but I, didn't, I haven't really had a clean, clean run, to be honest. But yeah, we're gonna start to see where the problems occur. The window wipe is on, the rain is coming, and I weren't quite prepared for it. The <laughs> Look at the, the wetness meter, the rain's coming down. I can barely hear even my own engine over the sound of the rain. I'm gonna miss the uh, breaking point for Degna 1. Underestimate the amount of grip I've got. Trundle back onto the track and it's, ah, it's all good, we can carry on. Lose the car completely. Racing hard tires in the wet are absolutely terrible. Eventually, I make it back to the pits, barely missing. Oh, there's just no grip, honestly, guys. If you see significant amounts of rain with colours in the, the rain map, get in the pit straight away. Doing one extra lap early on wet tyres is much better than being caught out with hard tyres in the wet. So yeah, I recommend wet tyres. I don't think intermediates are going to work because here it either rains amazingly hard or it doesn't rain at all. So on the uh, the full wet tyres, uh, you will have a significant more significantly more grip than you will on the racing hard tyres but don't underestimate it still it's very slippery and it rains hard lots of times during this race AI drivers they give up they drive slow um, everyone's slowing down I don't know why everyone's slowing down it's like well, well just get on with it it's only a little bit of rain but then I just run a little bit wide spoon get a snap of oversteer and then just fire it off in the wrong direction when it rains guys honestly it is uh, difficulty level extreme 
managed to finish that race. Um, my guy's not happy fifth. Trying to win this in the rain is very difficult. So I'm going to go again. So that's three races, two dry, one wet. What happens now? Same strategy. Let's do, do this. I'm going to drive from the normal driving cam, but I'm still going to make a mistake. Throw it into the barrier. And the rain's not really going to come in this race. You're going to get a band of basically no rain. Uh, yeah, it doesn't rain. When you, when you see this kind of weather pattern, it, it doesn't rain. It never rains enough to, to warrant a, a tyre change. Only be concerned about the colour bands of rain. We are going to pit on lap number six, uh, do the usual strategy. Uh, we're going to be fighting our way back through the field now. So it's lap number nine and we were fifth. We've just managed to get fourth and I don't see how one of this, but, but uh, Wang and Wilk will both pit. So that's three positions for me. Uh, it can put me in second. I'm going to get a 141 and actually gonna end up uh, catching and passing Miyazono and get the win. So another dry race. So that's three from four in the dry. Uh, when it, I mean, it wasn't a great race. I crashed a few times, but still managed to get the win. But what other cars can work? Because I've been banging the drum of this uh, per, uh, Porsche 919 hybrid, but other, other cars are good. You don't need to use a GR1 car. So I'm going to try the... Um, the 25th anniversary, uh, oh god, Red Bull, oh, yeah, it's hard work. It's going to need a bit of a tune, guys, so we're going to go and put uh, a bit more downforce on it because Suzuka needs downforce. No matter what car you're using, I'd highly recommend just maxing out the downforce for Suzuka. It will certainly help. Um, we seem to be over on PP, so we just need to detune it a little bit. Just a bit of numbers game uh, till we get it under the required PP. Racing hard tyres are the ones that I think are the most um, universally good. They give you a good amount of tyre life and they're okay for grip. Um, what we're going to do now, first time driving this car on this track, we're going to switch straight to the uh, fuel map to figure out where we're at. Uh, and oh, this car burns fuel quite a lot. So we have to use fuel map number six. And even then we can't do a no-stop strategy. We're going to have to do a one-stop strategy using fuel map six. Um, the car is a bit lively on corner exit, but maybe the tyres are just a little bit cold. Uh, I have got another video on my channel explaining what app you can use to see your tyre temperatures in Gran Turismo 7. That will be linked either at the end of the video or check out the uh, description box below for a bunch of different links that will help you get faster in Gran Turismo 7 or some other cool stuff that's going on. Uh, but yeah, this uh, Red Bull uh, Gran Turismo 25th anniversary car it feels okay, but it didn't feel as good as, as I expected it to. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're doing all right. We're getting through the first lap. No real dramas. Um, can be a little bit lively on corner exit. It's a rear-wheel drive car, quite a lot of power. Once you're up to third gear, the car is pretty safe. You can really get on the throttle quite aggressively, but below uh, second gear and below, be very, very cautious on the throttle. Uh, Downforce-wise, it seems okay. Top speed wise, I think it's just a little bit less than the Porsche 919 actually. Um, and what we're going to top out here, I think the Porsche was at 280 miles an hour, sorry, 280 kilometers an hour. Uh, we're just going to barely get 273. So I think we're a bit down on top speed compared to the Porsche 919 hybrid. Strategy wise, again with the, the radar, no rain for this race, I don't think. We're on lap number seven. Uh, so we're going to pit, uh, so it looks like the window of pit opportunity is the same for uh, this as it is with the Porsche 919 Hybrid. The difference is you need to run this one in fuel map number 6. So yeah, it does burn a lot of fuel, so you need to detune it quite a lot. So typically just fill it to, oh, you've got to overfill just to be safe. There's no point running out of fuel to save a tenth of a second in the pit stop. Uh, not sure quite how they change the wheels and tyres on this car because it's got enclosed, yeah. Okay, Gran Turismo logic. Uh, so yeah, we're going to exit the pits and we're going to be passed by a couple of cars, but they'll be pitting uh, later on in the race, so that's not really a problem for me. To the end of the race now, lap number 10, we're going to spank everybody in this race and we're going to finish with... Uh, what time did we finish this race with? It's a uh, 70 minutes 53, so it's a little bit slower than the Porsche 919 Hybrid. Would I recommend the car? Maybe. If I had it, you could use it, no problem. Let's try something else. Mazda 787B. There's not a great deal you can do with tuning this up from the 
uh, the GT Auto Tuning Shop. Uh, all we can do is change the setup. Again, going for a maximum downforce setup, racing hard tyres, everything was on the screen if you want to copy this setup, but honestly, I wouldn't bother. This was hard work. I love the Mazda 787B. It's an iconic car from the world of motorsport, Le Mans. I love watching all the Le Mans racing cars, the old Group C cars. It sounds incredible. Um, on this one, it's good on fuel. Uh, so I think I went, wanted to go, oh, it's a bit wild on throttle there. I wanted to go with this strategy to go on a no-stop strategy. Uh, Detuning the car a little bit helps to drive the car. It's pretty wild. So I'm gonna go for a no-stop strategy. Oh God, we are really not used to driving this car. This car severely lacks the downforce of the two previous cars we've driven already. So fuel map number two. Oh God, I'm almost losing the car there. I really need to get myself dialed into this one. I need to understand that the car is going to dominate in the straight, but it's going to be really uh, insufficient at high downforce corners. Uh, skipping forwards a little bit, we're going to really use the top speed of this car. Uh, actually, we'll switch to fuel up three just to make sure we make the no stop strategy. So, yeah, blasting down the straight, passing all these LMP cars, and we're all good now. But through the corners, man, it's really hard work. Um, but it's fun, I like driving it. I, I really wanted to get this car to work and, and beat this race in a Group C car. And, well, we're gonna see how it's gonna play out, guys. Uh, we're gonna go on the outside of the, um, not quite at this corner here, maybe to the inside. We are looking, it's a like-for-like like -like battle, another Group C car. They're gonna go on the outside on this uh, left-hander here and get that move done. Skipping fours now, and, oh, we didn't want this. The rain has come again, so, uh, this time I called it right with the pit stops. It just started raining. I could see the rain. This is the thing you need to be doing. When you see the rain coming, get in the pits. Um, I was going for a no stop strategy on fuel, so I actually don't need to fill up. Maybe I do put a bit of a splash of fuel in it. I, I can't remember. But the problem here, I was running no stop strategy pace, but it's actually started to rain. and I needed to pit for tires, so that's not going to work out very well for me and raining it is yellow flags everywhere everybody's giving up on driving because it's just too treacherous and yeah look at the radar guys rain everywhere it was a real tough race and i ended up uh, finishing seventh maybe i don't know no, i haven't got to the line yet uh, it was a real tough race throw in the rain as well and i don't think the mazda 787b is a viable car for this race it just doesn't have the downforce required to set the good lap times to get you the pace that you need to do so i'm going to finish in seventh place what other cars could we use a lot of people are mentioning the super formula car the super formula car is available as a honda or a toyota that both drive exactly the same it's just a branding thing uh, setup wise here is what we're going to do for the car so we're going to put the racing hard tires on it uh we're going to go for uh, maximum downforce actually we're going to reduce the front wing a little bit because i think i'm trying to get the performance points right here uh, just tweak these numbers just to get yourself under that ceiling for the performance points just copy what's on screen guys once i get it finally tuned up that'll be exactly what you need to do it'll be under the 9 950 pp limits so i re would recommend brake balance all the way to the rear on the brakes this car can understeer quite a bit so you want to have that uh, rearward brake bias um, and let's see what this car does again we were only limited to we are limited to racing hard tires as expected and let's see how this car drives now immediately you can feel the downforce you can see by the downforce numbers in the setup sheet the higher the downforce numbers the higher downforce points they are uh, so you can compare cars between each other if it's got a higher downforce points level then it is going to be a higher downforce car. The road cars will be in the low 100s or maybe 300s, uh, and then up to the, the uh, group cars, the LMP cars, they're going to be 1500 up to 2000. So we're going to have uh, fantastic downforce. Uh, fuel map wise, we're going to use fuel map number one, and we're going to go for the one stop strategy. And uh, it looks like the window for pit is a little narrow. We're going to do six laps of fuel on. Uh, six, six laps on a tank of fuel uh, but I think we're going to have pace uh, for days here we're going to throw it into the uh, hairpin here the Porsche is trying to fight back there now this is interesting you can see the hybrid from the Porsche just start to pull ahead and then we're going to start to gain back as we get beyond that hybrid range 
from what the Porsche can deliver. So top speed wise, this is the fastest top speed car of all the cars I've tried during this test. I think we almost touched 290 kilometers an hour at the end of the back straight. Let's just keep an eye on that number. Acceleration wise, the Porsche 919 is the fastest with the hybrid technology. Uh, but I think we're good on, oh, we're going to run out of space here. Oh, that's not ideal. Um, and he's going to, this kicking off. This this race, guys, honestly, is pretty fun. Uh, I just, I, th I think you can break the, the, the 100 board there into the chicane because the, the brakes are pretty good on this car. But you've got to approach this race with the right mindset. It's not a guaranteed win. It's not a guaranteed uh, one shot. And in this one, uh, it rained again for me. So... Uh, I'm on the racing hard tyres and I'm being very, very cautious here. I know how bad the racing hard tyres are, but with the extra downforce this Super Formula car has, that helps when the rain comes down. It sticks the car to the track and doesn't rely solely on tyre grip. Um, but I am going to be very cautious through this uh, 130R. I just want to get back to the pits, get those wet tyres on the car because that's going to give me a bit more confidence to drive the car. But the racing hard tyres are doing pretty good even when it's raining quite hard. So we're gonna get into the pits. Uh, we are on lap number four, so we are gonna be able to fill it to the end. So yeah, luckily the diamond there, uh, we are gonna be able to make it. The problem with this car, the pit window, uh, because it's a higher fuel usage, is a bit narrower. So you only have between laps four and six where you can pit, whereas with the Porsche 919, you can pit between lap three and seven. Gives you a bit more uh, scope for strategy. If it rains on lap number three, for example, you might have to pit twice in this super formula car or you can dial down the fuel map to make it to the end of the race uh, as you can see now we're on the wet weather tires uh, the rain is absolutely torrential uh, some really really significant rain and we just need to be cautious with the car when it's look at the rain coming down now with the rain i would highly recommend just throwing some traction control on don't be afraid to do that it, it's going to save your life um, and a couple of times in this race we we have problems and also uh, clean race bonus time now yellow flags ahead this guy just slows up I, I just drive to the outside and that is going to ruin my clean race bonus whether you're grinding for crates or whatever you're doing a yellow flag violation <laughs> yellow flag violation it's going to ruin your clean base race bonus it doesn't matter what other things you do it's very difficult to lose your clean race bonus but a yellow flag violation is a for sure clean race bonus denied. And look, the, the rain's so bad in this particular one, other drivers are almost stopping on the track. We've done the absolute right thing with this strategy here. Skipping forwards now, don't underestimate the lack of grip. You can crash at any moment in this race. We've got a big margin, guys, but we have so many incidents. Lap number nine, uh, get a bit of Tokyo drift into Degna two. And then we're going to follow up straight away, back to back, lap number 10, into Degna 2 once again. Copy the incident exactly. Check that back, guys. That is two separate laps consecutively. We just repeated it, but in the end, we, we got the win. A huge margin of victory. Uh, and we, I think we put a lap on Wilk there. Um, but we played that right with the strategy. The, the car choice helped as well. And it actually doesn't really matter what finishing time was because the rain cannot be compared with with a dry run so wh what do we know okay for sure what we know is this race is the hardest race in gran turismo 7 no question the rain is almost 100 percent random i think we had four dry races three heavily rain affected races so that plays a big part if you want to make it easy on yourself and it rains just just restart the race you will get a dry race uh, run consistent, run with a couple of my recommendations. So my first recommendation is the Porsche 919 Hybrid on a one-stop strategy. Pit anywhere between lap number three, lap number seven, refuel, fresh racing hard tires, and you're good to go. I think that is the best strategy to use. My other rec recommendation, if you're not bothered about using a Group 1 car, is to use a Super Formula car. Use the setup that I posted earlier in this video. Uh, if it's a dry race, I think you'll be perfectly fine. If it's a wet race, it'll be challenging, but probably a little easier than if you're in the Porsche 919, perhaps. Unfortunately, I cannot recommend the Mazda 787B or any of the Group C cars in Gran Turismo 7. 
They were incredibly fun to drive, but honestly, a real nightmare. They lack the downforce to be fast around this track, which is a shame. I love the Mazda 787B. I've, in fact, I've made some artwork for the Mazda 787B in my online shop. Make sure you check out the links in the description below to go and see my online store where you can get some absolutely fantastic Mazda 787B or even Golf Porsche merch, liveries, canvases, mugs. I'm going to start doing some t-shirts. Make sure you go and check out those links in the description below. If you have got this far in the video, then you are the true MVP of this channel. Make sure you hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new video. On screen right now will be links to other videos which will help you be faster in Grand Children 7. Other videos which you may find very interesting. A link to the merch store. Go over there and check out some of that sick stuff over there. And also the subscribe button. Hit any of those below and it'll be fantastic. I'll catch you in the next one.